chat podcast, the weekly co- podcast of MinnesotaVikingsChat.com featuring me, your host, David Erickson, and uh, with me today, Rick Birmingham from Minneapolis. Hey, Rick. Hello. And uh, Adrian Perryman is not with us uh, this week, so uh, it's a Rick and I solo, or duo, I guess. Uh, the NFL draft starts on April uh, 25 and goes, I think, three days this year. Um, so for the next few weeks, we'll be uh, discussing potential picks for the Vikings in their areas of need. And, of course, the Vikings' one area of need is uh, glaring need is receiver. And uh, so the Vikings have 11 picks, two in the first round. Uh, they have the flexibility to, uh, to make some deals. Uh, Stedman, Bailey, next on the list. Bailey is uh, from West Virginia, 5'10", 193 pounds, 32 and 3 quarter arm inch for arm length, uh, 9 and 7 eighths inch hands, 4.52 40 yard dash. Uh, he was uh, catching the ball from Geno Smith, who was also throwing to Tavon Austin. So there's another uh, uh, combo uh, receiving uh, duo that, uh, that played together. Rick, what are your thoughts on Sedman? I, as you say, I, he probably wasn't covered by the primary guy or at least not the fastest guy on the other team. Um, but, I, you know, he looks quick, change in directions. He looked strong for a guy that isn't that big. Um, it doesn't look like he's got crazy speed. So, uh, you know, we're sort of looking for somebody to stretch on the outsides, ideally. I don't know if Ponder could throw that far, but uh, I don't know that he's that. I think uh, his biggest strength seems to be his hands. Um, everybody talked about how he's – Got great hands, and that is very intriguing. Uh, that, that sounds wonderful. Um, and I, you know, people were saying things like reliable, and uh, where they said polished for uh, was it Hunter or uh, they, or uh, Woods? Yeah, they said reliable for him. Okay, um, that is yeah, what it is. I I, th- I think he's a tough receiver. He uh. He, he seemed to catch a lot of balls with a crowd around him. Three people yeah. on the ball would be, you know, Geno Smith would put the ball in, in the middle of three people. He'd catch the ball, take a hit, um, and... Hold on to the ball. Hold on to the ball, right. Mm-hmm. But he didn't seem to do a, uh, do as well with a, with a um, defender draped all over him. Yeah. So if he had some room, he could catch the ball. Uh, secure the ball, take a hit, wasn't afraid of it, um, but didn't seem to be able to out-muscle uh, defenders for the ball. Unless, uh, there was somewhere he got under him, I thought, because that, again, makes me think of Ponder and his rollout and catching the ball low. It, he seemed to do a pretty good job of that. He also got, I should mention, he got a lot of touchdowns. He had, like, you know, 25 touchdowns, which is great. He had a very good quarterback, um, but that that is intriguing. Again, no idea on the kick returning. Um, I didn't see a lot of him blocking. I didn't sit down and watch a game, but um, some of the other ones, they kind of show their uh, blocking, and with him, they didn't. Um, I worry a little bit that uh, he's sort of got good strength for how big he is. I think it was the National Football Post that said that. Um, And then he'll move up a level. And he'll he won't be pay, playing the second cornerback of the other team, and he won't they won't concentrate him on on him in the NFL. But he'll be facing better competition yeah. um, when he steps up, and uh, just hope he's strong enough to still get open. And yeah, uh, they I saw them run a lot of slants and bubble screens with him too, which is uh, you know types of routes will be uh, will be running. 